So today let's take a look at and inside of this protection box of this jump starter power bank. I already took a look inside of this power bank in the previous episode and in this episode let's explore this one. Every better jump starter power bank should have some protection instead of connecting its battery straight to the car battery. To prevent over discharging the jump starter battery or to prevent overcurrent or short circuit, but also to prevent charging the jump starter power bank from the car battery, especially after the car starts. Because when the alternator is running, the voltage goes up to about 14 or 15 volts. And of course, as I already mentioned in the previous episode, there are different configurations of jump starter power banks. And the voltage of them depends on this. If you have three lithium ion batteries in a series, you have those voltages, nominal and fully charged. And if it contains four lithium iron phosphate cells in a series, the voltages are a bit higher and the ones with four lithium ion batteries in a series have the highest voltages. And this particular power bank has this configuration, so it has this nominal voltage and this fully charged voltage probably. And when you discharge the cells, the voltage quickly drops from its fully charged voltage to near its nominal voltage and stays there for most of the discharge. And in a lithium iron phosphate cell, the discharge curve is even more flat. The voltage stays very close to its nominal level for most of the discharge. And of course different jump starters may have different protections. If you have the jump starter with the lower voltage, then the biggest concern is that once the car is started, the alternator voltage would overcharge the batteries in the power bank. Three lithium ion batteries would have this fully charged voltage, but the alternator produces much more voltage. So those jump starters probably contain just a shotgun diode in a series with the battery to prevent a reverse charging. But of course the disadvantage is that the diode will get quite hot in operation and also its voltage drop further reduces the voltage, which is already lower than the car battery voltage. And also those lower voltage power banks can't charge the car battery. So basically all the current comes from the jump starter and the car battery doesn't contribute to the starting and, and there is also no reason to leave it connected for a bit longer before starting the car. But the power banks with the higher voltages could charge the car battery and so it's a good idea to leave it connected to the battery for several minutes or even longer and then start the car. And those power banks tend to have a MOSFET based protection instead of a diode, which allows the control circuitry to disconnect it. If the jump starter battery is discharged too low or if there is too much current, it will turn the MOSFET off and disconnect it and protect the battery. But of course the problem is that the MOSFET contains a built-in diode and this diode would allow the alternator to charge the jump starter battery even when this MOSFET is off. But it's not such a big problem because those versions have higher voltages. So it probably shouldn't overcharge the battery but it still could charge it at quite a high current. But of course the voltage drop of the diode in the MOSFET is about 1 volt at higher currents, so it further reduces the voltage and reduces the risk of overcharging the battery. And of course in reality there is usually several MOSFETs in a parallel, or several diodes in a parallel. Because the currents are usually multiple hundred amps or even a couple thousand amps. This power bank says 2500 amps. But now let's try to see what's happening when I connect this to the power bank. It goes in like this and it's waiting for the car battery to be connected. And this one is charged 82%, so it should run. And there is some symbol. It's waiting for the car battery. It's trying to detect it. Can I simulate the car battery using just a capacitor? What happens now? And it works. It says 14 or 15 volts. When I disconnect it, it again shows this symbol. And it seems to click. 
Is there a relay instead of a MOSFET? I connected my oscilloscope to the output and there is a slow pulsing. It's about two or three pulses per second. It's using this to detect the battery and when I connect it to the capacitor, it kind of smooths it out. Connect it. Disconnect it. Connect it. Disconnect it. Let's zoom it. And that's the output signal. And it has a built-in voltmeter in it. But now, of course, let's take a look in it. It has some instructions on it how to use it. You basically connect it to the jump starter, then to the car battery. It shows the voltage and you start the car and you disconnect it. But now, of course, let's try to open it. There are some screws, probably two in it, and it should open. It opens. And what's this? Is it a relay? So let's take a closer look at it. There is nothing from this side of the board and the black cable goes straight through and there is just this connection connecting it to the board and the protection is disconnecting the red one, the positive one. It seems to go through the relay. And from this side of the board there's the relay, the display and there is some microcontroller under the display. It's not really visible much. Here it's visible. And some other components. Some transistors, small resistors, capacitors, some diode, a small capacitor, an electrolytic one here, and a beeper. And that's it. It's basically just some voltmeter with this display, LED display, with some custom symbols here on it and a protection circuitry which basically can control this relay. And the relay says the coil is 12 volts DC and the contacts are 70 amps, 14 volts DC. Just 70 amps? It seems a bit strange seeing this relay inside of something that says 2500 amps peak current. But of course it's just a peak current. This is the continuous rating of the relay and it can probably take a higher current when it's just a short peak. And of course the relay is better than a diode or a MOSFET because it may drop less voltage and it can also turn off and disconnect it in both directions. It doesn't have the problem of this anti-parallel diode in a MOSFET. Let's try to measure the current drawn by this protection using my clamp meter and it's about 16 milliamps with the relay off, of course. And when the relay is on, it draws more, of course, because of the coil. Does it have a short circuit protection? What if I short this? It's beeping and... It shows some symbols, R and SC, short circuit probably. And here's the type number of the relay. Can I find the data sheet of it? And here's just the data sheet of a similar relay. It seems to be very similar. It also says 70 amps, 14 volts DC and it says contact resistance 100 milliohms maximum. But this data sheet is a bit questionable because it also says Insulation resistance 100 milliohms at 500 volts. It probably means 100 megaohms. And does this one mean 100 microohms instead? Otherwise it doesn't make much sense. And it also says the maximum switching power 980 watts. If the contact resistance was 100 milliohms, which is 0.1 ohms, and it's rated current 70 amps, it would drop 7 volts. Which doesn't make much sense and at the peak current of the jump starter it would drop 250 volts. Which is completely crazy. If it was meant to be in a micro ohms, the voltage drops would be those. 
But anyway, using a 70 amp relay in something that says 2500 amps is a bit questionable, but of course this is just a very short peak current. And you probably don't use it more than a couple times anyway. So it's possible that the relay survives and in a certain sense it may be better than a MOSFET. But of course I didn't find any data sheet of this relay, just a data sheet of a similar one and it doesn't say any peak current rating of it. But the relay is probably not operated within its specification. But when it's just a very short peak and it doesn't happen very often, it may still survive. And of course there is a big difference between just passing the current and switching under the current. Of course the relay suffers much more wear when it's switching under the current than when it's just passing the current. If the relay switches under this current, the contacts would probably get welded, but when it's already on when this peak current happens and it doesn't turn off under this current, it could be fine. Of course it's well beyond the specification of this relay, but I can't imagine fitting a 2500 amp rated relay into this. And also fitting it into the budget of it. It's hard to judge it just based on the specification. It really has to be tested in real life situations. So that's it, I put it back together and in the future I may come up with some way of testing it and in one of the episodes I also plan to measure the capacity of the battery in it. So this is Dark Wild and see you in my next videos and thanks to all of my patrons on Patreon. I really appreciate your support. And of course you can also become my patron to support my channel and get early videos. And of course I also plan to take a look inside of those dodgy chargers from eBay. And I recently started my Instagram and I'm not sure what I'm going to put there, but probably a mixture of everything. Some pictures from traveling, but also some pictures of some machines and electronics. But also maybe some cat, some dog. Basically anything interesting I take a picture of. There is a link to it in the description.